the Lord with me. Come on and bless the Lord with me. Come on and bless the Lord with me. Come on and bless the Lord with me. Hallelujah. discouraged and going through that the Lord will encourage them and help them in their time of need. Remember those that are uh, uh, those that have backslidden, those that turn their backs on the Lord. Uh, let's pray that the Lord will touch their minds and then uh, loose the bands of wickedness so that they can turn their hearts back unto the Lord. And let us pray also, too, that we'll prepare ourselves, uh, when I say prepare ourselves, stay ready for the coming of the Lord. Any other prayer requests? Um, I just wanted to ask for prayer that um, I grow stronger in the Lord. Yes. Like you said earlier, just, just come closer to him. Yes. Yes. Amen. Sister 
Marvel. This is physical healing. Yes. We pray for that. Bless you physically in your body. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. All right. Uh, let the church stand and let every heart pray. Oh, gracious Father, in the precious and the mighty name of Jesus, Lord, we certainly thank you and praise you for all of your grace, your mercy, your love, and your kindness. We thank you, Lord, for allowing us to come together one more time in the precious and the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, we ask you to bless each and every request that's been made known. Bless, Lord, with a hunger and thirst after righteousness. And, Lord, bless us to be in the press that every time the house of the Lord is open, that we'll be here in the name of Jesus. And, Lord, we pray for divine healing. We pray for divine deliverance in your holy and precious name. We ask you, Lord, that you bless our service on today. Send forth your anointing. Send forth your power and your grace. Sanctify our hearts and our mind in the name of Jesus. And bless all those that are listening uh, by way of internet, Lord. We ask you to bless. Hallelujah. Let your anointing be felt. Hallelujah. Your presence in the room. Father, we thank you and praise you. Give you glory and honor. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Thank you, Lord. Scripture says, where two or three are gathered together in his name, he said he'll be in the midst. Thank you, Lord. And we thank the Lord that he is here with us on tonight. Hallelujah. And we pray that he will manifest his Shekinah glory. Uh, we're, I want you to turn with me uh, to the book of Hebrews, uh, chapter number 12. Hebrews, chapter number 12. Thank you, Lord. And the book of Hebrews is literally written from a, to include, I'm going to say, a, a, a Hebrew perspective. Uh, Romans were literally written to the Gentiles, and Hebrews is literally written to uh, written to, uh, I'm going to say, the non-Jews, but it also has a component to it that was trying to get Jewish converts into Christ, to show them the types and the shadows of the old covenant, how it relates to the new covenant, the new testament. So as we get ready, uh, to go into the scriptures, I want to begin reading at the book of Hebrews chapter number uh, 12, beginning at literally verse number one. And tonight, uh, we want to uh, focus in on not only the truth that is in the word of God, but also how the truth applies to our life. In other words, are we walking in truth? Uh, the reality of the word of God. It's important that, that we walk in reality because we can deceive ourselves. Uh, and we can, we can at times not only deceive ourselves, but we can make ourselves believe something that is not true, which will cause us problems in our walk with God. Amen? Thank you, Lord. We don't want to cause ourselves to believe a lie, uh, but we want to walk in truth and believe truth. When something is presented to us, not to make excuses for it, but accept the truth of what it is, and deal with it like that, uh, the reality, amen. God wants us to dwell in reality. Jesus said, uh, he said, I am the way, the truth, and the life, amen. And no man cometh unto the Father but by me. And when Jesus relates to us and speaks to our heart, he relates and speaks to our heart in truth. He doesn't tell us a lie. Amen? And, and let us be able to accept and handle the truth. 
that is contained not only in the Word of God, but as we live it and see it, we'll be able to accept it and walk in it. Amen? Amen. All right. So we see here then, uh, Hebrews chapter number 12, verse number 1, it says, Wherefore seeing we are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses. Notice what it says. True. Lay aside every weight and the sin that does so easily beset us, and let us run with patience the race that is set before us. Looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him, he endured the cross, despising the shame, and is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. All right? So Paul, in, in, in writing this particular letter, he wrote, uh, Wherefore, seeing we are also compassed about with so great a, a cloud of witnesses. And this is actually a continuation from chapter number 11. And in chapter number 11, that's the faith chapter. And he's talking about uh, all of those that uh, live and walk with God by faith and were able to obtain the victory. And the and, and Bible tells us they that come to God must believe that he is and that he's a rewarder to them that diligently seek him. And, and people who want to do uh, great things in the eyes of God have to do it by faith. And, and in order to live this life, you have to live it by faith. And Paul was saying, we are compassed about. Abraham walked with God by faith. Moses walked with God by faith. Sarah was able to conceive seed by faith and have a child. Everything that is done for the kingdom of God must be done through faith. And Paul also said that those that were uh, threatened and, and put to death, they, they refused to surrender uh, by faith because they believed that God would deliver them. Uh, uh, if it wasn't by death, that he would send some type of deliverance to them in the physical and the natural. Amen? So, so Paul says we are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses. And these witnesses he's referring to are those that are under the old covenant and he's putting it in a context wherein there are cheerleaders. They are there, uh, uh, think about in a Roman Colosseum, you got gladiators fighting in, 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 in that Colosseum uh, to the death. And then you got the crowd around them, uh, cheering them on, you know, uh, to continue to fight, not to surrender, and, and to continue to press on even through heartache, even through uh, pain, even through uh, things that, 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 that were coming out against them uh, that were trying to kill them. But cheering them on to, to not to surrender, but to, but, to, but to receive the crown. Go for the prize. Amen? So that's what Paul is saying, that, that, that we ought to be encouraging one another. That we ought to encourage uh, each other to continue on. Amen? So that, so that don't let trials and tribulations and don't let persecutions hinder you. Uh, continue on with the fight so that you can receive the crown. Amen? So he says here, wherefore we are surrounded by a great cloud of witnesses. Then he gives the instruction, the truth. He says, lay aside every weight. Uh, lay it aside. Lay aside every weight and the sin that does so easily beset us. And let us run uh, the race with patience that is set before us. So he says, lay aside. That means you got to put some things aside. When you're competing, uh, when, you're, when you're fighting, uh, you've got to Lay some stuff aside. Notice he said, lay aside every weight and the sin that does so easily beset us. A, a weight is a burden. 
a burden. Things in life burden us. Amen? Uh, 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 you can think about it in your own life. What, what hinders you? What, what is a stumbling block to you? Uh, that's, that's a burden. That's a weight. Amen? And he says, uh, I walk in truth. Identify it as a burden uh, and lay it aside. Don't try to carry that burden with you as you're trying to follow after Christ. Uh, it's, it's too much. It's too much of a load. Uh, it, it will cause you to stumble and fall. It won't allow you to excel to your highest height, your, your, your greatest level. It won't, it won't allow you to fight at your peak, if you allow me to say it that way. Uh, so, so whatever uh, the hindrances are or the burdens are, sometimes uh, uh, we're talking about truth tonight. Sometimes we carry things that the Lord doesn't want us to carry. Uh, we hold on to things that the Lord does not want us to hold on to. Uh, and we think uh, just because it's part of my baggage, I got to hold on to it. Uh, I got to carry it with me. Uh, but that's not true. Uh, it's not true. God doesn't want us to be burdened down uh, uh, with any weights that are going to hinder us from, from achieving and, and excelling in him. Y'all follow me tonight? Amen. Amen. So, so he says, lay aside the weight, the load, the hindrance, you know, and, and you know, you have to identify uh, yourself what that load is, what that hindrance is, uh, and, and lay it aside. Uh, 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 mind over matter. Uh, let it go. Uh, because it's not doing you any good. Uh, so he says, lay aside the weight or the hindrance uh, uh, and the sin. Now we all know what sin is. <laughs> the transgression of the word of God. Anything uh, uh, the state first and foremost should always lay aside sin. Uh, sin, uh, anything that transgresses the word of God uh, that sin, you should automatically let that go. That shouldn't be an argument. But those weights, sometimes uh, uh, those burdens, sometimes we don't realize how burdened we are and, and how cumbersome we are until, you know, we find ourselves somewhere in a corner uh, and can't move, paralyzed. Uh, and, and those things that we're trying to carry on our own, uh, the Lord doesn't want us to carry those things. Amen? All right. Any questions on that? Because that's very important. Uh, and, and what we're talking about tonight is identifying what is true. Amen? Now, if, if it's a weight and if it's a burden, uh, I, I, I'm supposed to let it go. Uh, don't carry it. Don't, 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 don't can try to continue on with it because it will hinder my walk with God. Amen? Uh, I won't be able to excel. I won't be able to achieve. Uh, Sister Margaret? Uh, how, how do you handle it when you're in the company, like say a family member, and they bring up stuff, and you don't want to discuss it, and they still bring it up? Yes. Well, after you tell them, hey, I don't want to discuss this, and um, don't bring it up, let them talk to themselves uh, and, and, and shut down on them. You know what I'm saying? And, and uh, uh, we're going to get into that part of it uh, a little later. But the scripture says, as much as lieth in you, live peaceably with all men. And um, if they're not respecting that boundary, you know, uh, there's nothing wrong with you walking away. You know, uh, or, 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 or not uh, discussing it and allowing them to talk to themselves. You know, it takes two to have a conversation. <laughs> yes, absolutely. And, and you hit on exactly what I'm, what I'm talking about. The truth of the matter is, is that you don't want to discuss it. So why discuss it? You know, for whatever reason. You know, and, and, and uh, sometimes 
we get into trouble when we try to accommodate people uh, and, and try to be, uh, now don't get me wrong, we're supposed to be nice, but, but you know, there's, 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 there's conditions uh, on, on the niceties. <laughs> if, it's, if it's an issue and if it's a problem, you know, uh, and uh, shut it down. That's the truth. Uh, that's the truth. Amen? That's where your wisdom of the Word of God can say, hey, you're going somewhere I can't go. Right. Bye. Bye. Absolutely. That's nothing wrong with that. Amen? Nothing wrong with that. Thank you, Jesus. Good question. So he says here, he says, uh, lay aside the weight and the sin which so, does so easily beset us. And that word beset means literally to plague. Plagues us. Uh, to to uh, plague us. And, and uh, if things are, are troublesome. Things that are in life, they, they plague us. They are, they, they are troublesome to us. Uh, those things that are in your life, uh, the scripture says, let a man examine himself to see whether or not he or she is in the faith. Uh, what, what may trouble me may not trouble Brother Bob, Bro Brother Rob, uh, may not trouble Mother Davis. You follow me? May not trouble uh, Sister Jack. Uh, but but, but uh, if, it's, if it's besetting me, if it's plaguing me, if it's troublesome to me, and if it's hindering my walk with Christ, I have to let it go. I have to cut it off. Uh, so long, bye-bye. <laughs> Amen? Amen. Uh, that's truth. Amen? That's being honest with yourself and being honest with whomever you're dealing with. Amen? Because above all else, you've got to rid this race. You've got to see Jesus in the end. Hallelujah. Amen? Hallelujah. And, and you can't do that being burdened down. Some people can't say no. Huh? Everybody, everybody asks them everything. Huh? But, and they do everything. But some people can't bring themselves to say no. Sometimes you have to say no. Amen? You, we are not super women and supermen. Amen? So I, I'm not going to try to be. You follow me? Hallelujah. Amen? So he says that word, that word beset. What does that word beset mean? Plagues. Plagues. Troublesome. Huh? Anything that's plaguing you or troublesome to you, you've got to lay it aside. Amen? Hallelujah. So he says, lay aside every weight and the sin that does so easily beset us, and then, he says, run the race with patience. And that, that run means to run the race with endurance. Amen? Endurance. That means being able to, to, to uh, uh, abide under the pressure. Uh, under the pressure. And the Lord will help you to abide under the pressure. But, but I allow stumbling blocks. I allow uh, hindrances which he didn't ordain. Uh, which, which he didn't call. Uh, now, he's anointed us to overcome everything. Uh, but there's some things that we yoke ourselves with that are unnecessary. Uh, Jesus says his yoke is what? Easy. Easy. And his burden is what? Light. So, so if, if I'm trying to walk with Christ and my walk with Christ seems to be burdensome, uh, like, oh my God, uh, Jesus want me to do this again. That's a problem. Uh, uh, because my, the joy of the Lord is my strength. Amen. I should be happy uh, to, to do the things that God has ordained me to do. Now, it's, it's true. It's true. If I'm not happy to do it, then he didn't ordain it. 
Y'all with me? Y'all with me? If he didn't, if, if I'm not happy to do it, he didn't ordain it. Amen? Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. My God. Who are we teaching up in here? Go ahead. Uh huh. If he then you let it go. You let it go. Do that which he ordained for you to do, and and do that which brings you joy. Do that which brings you peace. Bring that. Do that which empowers you to 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 advance his kingdom. Hallelujah. That's true. Amen? Because the Lord don't want us to wake up uh, feeling, feeling blue and, 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 and troubled and, and burdened down. Uh, he didn't call us for that. Huh? Uh, yeah. He called us to accomplish his will, to run this race with patience. Amen? Uh, not, not, not being burdened, not being plagued. Amen? Hallelujah. All right. Now, notice what he said. Let us run this race. Uh, uh, Paul is styling our walk with Christ or our life with Christ as a run. Uh, run, run with patience. The race that is what? That, that is set before us. We have a, 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 a goal in mind. Amen. We all should have a goal in mind. Amen? We all should have a destination in mind. Uh, we're not living this life like butterflies flying around. Amen? We should have a purpose. We should have a focus. Amen? Amen. Uh, we should have a goal. And, and, and our goal should be to see Jesus. Amen? Amen? To be ready when he comes. Am I right? That's the goal. Above all else. Above all costs. And notice, I make all of my decisions based on that. In other words, I live my life based on that goal. Based on that focus. Amen? And, and let all other goals and focuses pass away. Amen? There's a scripture in the book of uh, Proverbs that tells us, it says that without a vision... The people perish. Uh, that's referring to without a vision in your mind, a goal in your mind, you live without restraint. Uh, my, the because I'm, I'm living to live again, I live with restraint. I, I, I don't allow myself uh, to get involved in things that will be a, 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 a hindrance, a weight, a sin. Amen? Uh, because I know that, that, that nobody that's walking in that pathway is going to see Jesus. Amen? So, so with that goal in mind, with that uh, uh, purpose in mind, I, I, I'm looking to Jesus and I'm living my life uh, to, to live again. That's the goal. That's the purpose. Amen? Hallelujah. Now, now notice then. He says, let us run with patience the race that is set before us. What's your goal? Why are you living this life? You have to ask yourself the truth. We're dealing with truth tonight. Why are you living this life? Amen? Are you living it to see Jesus? Are you living it to please others? Are you living it uh, 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 just because? But do you have a reason? Uh, and, and is that reason legitimate? Amen? Hallelujah. Because if you don't have the right focus and you don't have the right reason, this life can become a burden uh, to you because you want to do something else. <laughs> now, 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 let me say this. You know, uh, uh, love is a choice. Amen? Thank you. And we should be so glad that it's a choice. Because before we came to Christ, we was in love with sin. Amen? Uh, in love with evil. Uh, but, but then, because love is a choice, uh, he allowed us to fall out of love with that. To cause us to fall in love with Jesus. Amen? To fall in love with righteousness. To fall in love with holiness. Right? 
Huh? But notice, love still remains a choice. So you can fall out of love with holiness. You can fall out of love with righteousness. Uh, if you make that choice. Am I right? Huh? So that's why he says, choose you this day. <laughs> huh? You got to choose every day whom you're going to serve. Hey, am I right? Huh? Who are you going to set your affection upon? Huh? Huh? That's what we're talking about love, being a choice. You got to set your affection huh, upon, upon him. Huh? Choose to love him. Amen? Hallelujah. And, and know why you love him. Amen? Hallelujah. My God in heaven. My God. Choices. Be walking in truth. Amen? So notice, he says, you got to run the race with patience. We're in Hebrews chapter 12 and verse number 1. He says, and let us run the race with patience that is set before us. So, so you've got to identify a goal. Why are you running this race? Why are you called over here to holiness? Amen? Why are you living for Jesus? Why have you set your affection upon him? Amen? Hallelujah. And, and you've got to allow that to be your goal, your focus. What do you want to attain? I want to see him. I want to, I want to be with him. Amen? Hallelujah. I, want to, I want to fulfill what, what he desires of me. Amen? And then, you know, you've got to meditate on those things. Let that be in your mind until it gets in your spirit, your soul, and your body. Amen? Like, like allow it to become everything to you. Oh, hallelujah. My God. My God. Everything. Huh? Hallelujah. That nothing else matters. Huh? I got to see Jesus. I got to be who he called me to be. I've got to live this life so I can please him. So I can walk with him. Amen? Hallelujah. And do like he said do. Uh, that's my goal. That's my purpose. And when that's your goal and your purpose, then you're able to lay everything else aside. Uh, you're able to overcome the weights. Go ahead. Hallelujah. Yes. Yes. Jackie, you just summarized the Bible study. Amen. <laughs> you know, you, you got to, you know, and notice, notice what she said. I like what she said. She said when she uh, stopped the car, told the individual to get out. All right? That's not being mean. Huh? That's not being mean. Huh? That's, that's, that's walking in truth. Huh? You're upsetting me. And your lifestyle and my lifestyle, it doesn't agree. Huh? And you're causing me to go to a dark place. Huh? You become burdensome, a plague, huh? troublesome to me. And then, I like what she said, once that happened, she received peace. Yeah. Amen? Huh? That's walking in truth. Huh? Huh? Well, don't carry around stuff huh? that, that God isn't ordained for you to carry around. Just so you can please others uh, or please yourself. 
Uh, because you can't say no. My brother? Uh, even the world knows that because I do ride share, and one of the things they say is, if you're having a problem with a rider, you can end it at any time. <laughs> I like if that. You're in charge. If you're a vehicle, <laughs> you can end it at any time. If they're, if oh they're being God. belligerent or something, you can say, sorry, this ride's over. Bye. Bye. I like that. We ought, we ought to. The world we, knows what the Bible's saying. Yeah. We ought to live by that. You know, you it's your vessel. Uh, uh, uh. And, 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 and the Lord has given you power. The Lord has given you authority. Amen? And, and no doubt, I'm going to say this. I'm saying it with all truthfulness. No doubt, the Lord has said in your mind, when you're dealing with uh, these types of individuals, cut them off. Uh, I'm sure he's told you that. Uh, let it go. <laughs> but, but then what we do, we rationalize it. Uh, uh, we try to hang on to it. Yeah. Uh, when the Lord is saying, let it go. Let it go. Hallelujah. Mar Margaret and my sister. It, it came to me, don't contaminate your vessel. Right. Absolutely. And he doesn't want us to do that. My beloved sister. Surrender it to him. Uh, and, and, and that is not of God. Uh, and then I like what she said, how the Lord uh, dealt with her heart. He talks to us. Uh, he talks to us. We're going to see that in the scripture. He talks to us to help us to walk in truth. Amen? Don't deceive yourself. <laughs> if the egg is rotten, Throw it away. <laughs> huh? Why try to save it? It's rotten. But says, My question is, Bishop, when there's a lot of medical conditions. All right. Family, All right. That, that brings on a lot of burdens and, you know, uh, worries or whatever. So how do you go about letting that completely go? Well, that, that's, a, that's a walk of faith. In, in this respect, um, um, you take it to the Lord, lay it at his feet, and believe him. That's how you let that go. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. And, and we, we, this is how we know it's bothering us, you know, when we have to let it go. It's when we're, we're carrying it around and it consumes our mind. Our spirit. Huh? It, it hinders my praise and my worship in the sense that it's such so much of a heaviness. I can't get my own breakthrough. Huh? So, so what we have to do is, is, is literally talk to ourselves huh? and, and pray and really have faith in God and Lord, I trust you with this. Amen. Um, Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. This is good. This is good. This is what we need. Truth. Amen? Yeah. All right. Now notice this. He says, uh, 
Lang, Lang, uh, Hebrews 12 and 1, he says, Wherefore seeing we are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, uh, let us lay aside every weight and the sin that does so easily beset us, and let us uh, run with patience the race that is set before us. Verse number 2, looking unto who? Jesus, who is the what? Author and the finisher of our what? So, so I've got to keep my focus on him. Amen? He said, I will keep thee in perfect peace whose mind is staying on me. Amen? So I can't allow uh, the pressures of this life to hinder me and to yoke me wherein it blocks my view of Jesus. I've always got to see him. Amen? Why? Because he's the author and the finisher of my faith. Now notice how he put that. Huh? You, you need faith in order to walk with him. Amen? And you've got to have confidence and faith, not in your ability, but in his ability. Right? So, so I've always got to see Christ in everything I do. Huh? You've always got to see Jesus in everything you do. Amen? If, if Christ is not in it, then you're not in it. Huh? And if you can't see Christ in it, even though he may be in it, then you're going to fail. You're going to throw in the towel. Why? Because you don't believe, huh? you don't see it by faith that Christ is in it. You understand what I'm saying? You always got to see Jesus. Amen? Don't let any test or any burden or anything block your view of Christ. Now what I'm saying is this. Never allow yourself to get to a point where you feel all so hopeless. Huh? That, that all is lost. When you become suicidal. Huh? Like I'd rather die huh, than live this life. You've lost sight of Christ. Huh? You've lost sight of Jesus. Huh? Hallelujah. That's true. Huh? That's true. Hallelujah. Life, life can burden you so much that you'll lose sight of the glory of the Lord. And when you lose sight of the glory of the Lord, you're going to lose out your walk of faith. Huh? Because everything you attain from God, you attain it by faith. Huh? Your deliverance is by faith. Huh? Your joy is by faith. Huh? Your power is by faith. Your anointing is by faith. Amen? Hallelujah. Your fight against the devil is by the shield of faith. Huh? When you quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. You can't activate God's word in your life unless you activate it by faith. Hallelujah. Huh? You've got to see Jesus. Hallelujah. You've got to see him high and lift it up. Hallelujah. Hey, hallelujah. People who are mother murmurers and complainers, they lose sight huh, on the God that delivered them. Hallelujah. My brother. I don't know if this makes any sense, but as a Christian, where does our responsibility stop with a, with a brother or sister in the faith that isn't living up to their, you know, their, that they might be giving you a hard time or whatever? Yeah. Where, where do we draw the line? Where, uh, where does, I mean, because it says whatever you do on the least one of these, you do on the, I mean, there's, there's got to be a place where I, I'm working out my own salvation in fear and trembling. And if you're it, messing with me doing that, I got the right to say back off, right? Right. The Bible says, as much as life in you, uh, live peaceably with all men. Right. Right? So, so it's twofold. In order for me to live in peace with you, 
That means that we have to cut off some of our communication and contact because we're not walking in agreement. Right. Now, it also means, he said, if your brother trespass against you, how many times ought you to forgive him? Seven times right, so it's a continual forgiveness, right? right? So, so although I'm walking in truth, I recognize the fact that, that, that we don't agree on everything and, and our lives are in contention, yet uh, I, I forgive you, I don't hold it against you, and I, and I keep on loving you, but I realize that uh, we, have to, we have a boundary. Uh, we have a lie. Uh, and, 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 and I have to respect that boundary in line in order for me to, walk, uh, to have a peaceful relationship with you. But I forgive you. I'm not holding any grudges against you. I'm not backbiting you. Uh, I, want, I want the best for you. I'm praying for you. Uh, but I know that uh, uh, some conversations we can't get into because uh, we don't agree. Uh, follow what I'm saying? Politics, we don't agree. <laughs> uh, uh, religion, we don't agree. Well, uh, uh, your, your lifestyle, uh, 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 the Bible is contrary to that, we don't agree. Follow? Uh, but I still love you, I forgive you, I'm praying for you, but I'm walking in truth. Amen? Uh, go ahead, you're going to say something else. Well, uh, I'm actually going through a situation right now. Uh huh. This is where, good. This where, is good. Uh, this is where you bring that stuff up. Where, where a person <laughs> said something pretty rough to me. Yeah. And I told him where to get off. I oh, said, okay. Told him in love. I'm not going to deal with this no more. Oh, okay. Yeah. I, and I cut him off. I okay. Up on him. Okay. And uh, right now, I'm, I'm feeling a little Guilt. bit of guilt. Because I like him. Right. I don't dislike him, right. but I don't know if I want to go to him and, and, and try to patch it up or have him come to me. I, well, I let me ask you. I don't know where to go with that. Let me ask you. Uh, when you cut it off, were you in any way disrespectful? Were you, were you, were you? All I said, I was angered. Because right. he, he called me a liar. Right, anger, anger. We all get more of that emotion. And, and I, that's when I, when I blew up at him and told him no more. Uh huh. I wasn't going to take no more. All right. Because he, he was putting me down and stuff. And, oh. And I, I just, I've had, I had enough of him. Yeah, yeah. I mean, what? I tried to help him. I, I drive him around and stuff. Did all that kind of stuff for him. He claims to be a Christian. Oh. People claim to be Christians all the time. Right, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, but, but yeah, in, in cases like that, you know, uh, you, you held the line, sounds like, you told them, you know, that, and you cut it off. So move forward, forgive them. Oh, you know? I yeah, I release them. The right, keep on moving. Because I, I, I know where I'm headed. Right, keep on pushing. <laughs> so I'm going to wait for, if he wants to come and repent, I'll, I'll accept it. And that's it. On, but if he doesn't, that's so it. Ahead. That's it. I'm with you, man. Go ahead. Sister First Lady. One thing I was going to say, you know, in those kind of cases, you have to make sure your spirit is right. Make sure you right. love that person and you have to give it. Right. You got to make sure that they have that spirit with yourself. Right. Walk in love. Yeah. Oh, I forgive him, man. That's I, it. I have, any, I have no animosity toward him. Right. Me. Now, in dealing with the individual, it especially sounds like you're going to have some more dealings with them. You know, uh, stay away from them topics. Stay away from them issues. Well, I don't know if it, it, it's going to, because his attitude is he don't like to be, uh, I, don't, I don't see him coming back to me. Oh, okay. Well, I, hey. I really don't see it happening. Amen. <laughs> I'm, I'm just going to go my way and, right. and we'll be all right. Amen. Amen. Nothing wrong with that. Thank you. Nothing wrong with that. Now, when it comes to a sister and a brother that dwell in the same church, or you live in the same house, yeah. right? Now, now it, it's on another level, right? You still have to deal with that individual, right? So, so that 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 forgiveness 
and that love, you know, it has to be there uh, and, and deal with the individuals in the area that, that you both agree in, that you're able to, to agree with. Amen? Hallelujah. Y'all with me? Well, Peter and Paul didn't agree on anything. Right, right. But, 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 but now listen. Uh, uh, you bring up a good one. Uh, Paul and John Mark, they had a disagreement about the scripture. They divided, they separated. Uh, Paul grew up in his spirit and, and Mark grew up in his spirit. And they were able to come back together. Uh, so you've got to allow for the growth uh, so people can come back together. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Y'all with me? Uh, I'm, I'm teaching truth tonight. Amen? Hallelujah. Don't, don't, don't hold grudges. Uh, don't allow bitter roots to hang on. Uh, forgive. Let go. Amen? Hallelujah. Walk with God. <laughs> Especially in the church, because whatever you hold against a fellow member of the church can cause the whole church to hurt. Absolutely, sedition. Amen. Huh? Hallelujah. So go ahead. Go ahead. We're gonna move on with the Bible study. Hey. church, but anybody else, don't allow evil communications to corrupt you. Huh? No, 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 the limit. Amen? That's with people outside the church, people in your house, people in the church, uh, the physical church. Body of Christ ain't gonna act like that. Follow? And, and don't allow other people to have influence over you to cause you to come against what is written in the scriptures. Huh? My God. Don't be a bandwagon saint. Huh? Uh, Monique doesn't like him. I ain't got nothing against him, but because she don't like him, I ain't going to like him. That's juvenile. Huh? Kid-like. Juvenile. Something I heard. Huh? And so now I got an attitude. Don't know why I got an attitude. Uh, but I got it. Because, because, because I feel uh, she's got influence over me. And it has influenced my mind. You follow me? Satan can do that as well. Oh, yeah. Influence us. Mm -hmm. Walk in truth. Nothing behind me, Satan. Notice. Amen. The Lord has set you free. Amen. Amen. Free to make choices of your own. Amen. Y'all with me? Free to walk with him. Amen. Amen. Uh, this is good stuff. 
All right, where we at? Flip up. Okay, we in Hebrews chapter number twelve and verse number twelve. He says, "Looking unto Jesus, who's the author and the finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before Him endured the cross." Now, now notice, I told you earlier that you have to have a goal in mind, right? Jesus had a goal in mind when he came here to this earth to give his life for a ransom for you and I. His whole goal and mission was to go to that cross. Amen? Amen? And anything that tried to hinder him from that goal and that mission, he laid it aside. Case in point, uh, when he asked his disciples, who do men say that I am? Y'all know the story. Peter said, thou art the Christ, right? Then after that, Jesus praised him. And then uh, he told him uh, that I'm going to die, go to the cross. Peter said, be it far from you. Jesus laid aside that weight. Rebuke you, say that. Uh, quickly, shut him down. No. Uh, you savor not the things that be of God. Huh? Uh, flipped on him just like that. Why? Because he was coming against his purpose. Uh, coming against his destiny. Coming against the reason why he was born. Huh? Don't let nobody come against your destiny. Uh, don't let nobody come against the reason why you were born. Huh? Hallelujah. Huh? You were born to uh, attain eternal life, to live with God forever. Amen. Am I right? Amen. Don't allow anything, anybody, we use the pronouns, person, person, place, or things. People, places, or things. Amen? Don't allow any of that huh, to stop you from attaining that goal. Amen? How much does it value to you? Huh? Hallelujah. Amen? Now notice, 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 notice. He says, looking unto Jesus, who's the author and the finisher of our faith, who is our example, huh? who for the joy that was set before him, amen? Uh, we've got some joy that is set before us. Hallelujah. Uh, this ain't it. Huh? What we're living right now is not it. <laughs> Our eyes haven't seen no ears have heard what God has prepared for them that love him. Amen? Uh, there's something greater, there's something better uh, that's coming. Amen? Do we believe that? Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Now let me say this. Do you know that? <laughs> now notice, who for the joy that was set before him, he endured the cross. Huh? So, so for that joy that is set before you, you have to endure your crosses. In fact, he said, pick up your cross huh? and follow me. Pick up your burden. Pick up huh? your, your, your stress. Huh? Pick up whatever is hindering you huh? and follow after me. Amen? Follow after Jesus. Amen? Now notice, he says, he says, uh, endured the cross, he despises the shame. Uh, sometimes on this walk, uh, 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 you have to humble yourself so it may seem shameful. Uh, but you've got, to, you've got to look that shame in the face and say, so what? Uh, <laughs> uh, I'm going to live for Jesus. Uh, uh, the Bible says, you got to turn, turn, lay aside every weight. The Bible says if, if, your, if your enemy hits you on one cheek, turn the other cheek. Huh? Huh? That can be shameful sometimes. Huh? Huh? But you got to do it. You got to learn how to eat the humble pie. Huh? All of you pie for the joy of the Lord. Huh? So that the glory of God can be made manifest. It's not about you. Huh? It's about Him. Hallelujah. Uh, so, so you gotta take that shame and and and, and uh, 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 I despise it. I'm, I'm not I'm not gonna allow it to affect me. Uh, anything that you despise, you put away from you. Huh? Y'all with me? Hallelujah. Thank you. You don't eat nothing you despise. Huh? You reject it, don't you? Huh? So, so, so that shame and that guilt. 
uh, that, that the enemy wants to bring upon you because you're walking with Christ, uh, lay it aside. Huh? Uh, don't let that affect your decision. Hmm? Hallelujah. Become a what? A fool for Christ. <laughs> Hallelujah. Uh, sinners don't understand this walk anyway. No, they don't. Huh? Am I right? No, they don't. Hallelujah. My God in heaven. My God in heaven. Notice that despising the shame and is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. Now, verse number three. He says, for consider him that endured such great contradiction of sinners against himself, lest ye be weary and faint in your minds. In other words, look at Jesus. Focus on him. Amen? See Jesus in every aspect of your life, walking in truth. Notice that. Let's move on, because there's a place I want to be where I want to spend the rest of the Bible study. Uh, uh, verse uh, number four. He says, Ye have not resisted unto blood, striving against sin. Now, somebody may have hit you in the face, or somebody may have cut you, but you ain't suffered like Jesus. <laughs> striving against sin. Now, the suffering that you've gone through, uh, the, the, the words that people speak and say to you, uh, don't compare to what Jesus went through. Amen? Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. What we go through, Paul called it a light affliction. <laughs> uh, uh, and he said, that's just for, for a moment. Uh, and, and it works for us. You follow me? Hallelujah, my God. All right. Uh, what verse we in? Five. Okay. Uh, say, and ye have forgotten the exhortation which speaketh unto you as children. Ah, here we go. This is where I want to be. He says, My son, despise not thou the chastening of the Lord, nor faith when thou art rebuked of him. Now, we're talking about walking in truth. Earlier in the Bible class, we talked about what God reveals to us. Uh, and, and he tells us to let things go. Right? He tells us I'll give you an example. I'm, I'm, a person is at a, 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 a counter and they're purchasing something and they're looking at it and they're saying in their mind well, I really don't want that uh, but I don't want to tell the, the clerk that I really don't want it, so I make something up. I make something up. Why? Because I really don't want to hurt him or her feelings. So I'm not going to actually say the truth. I'm going to compromise what I say. I'm going to compromise what I do. Those things get us into trouble. Huh? I'm saying yes to stuff that I know is going to hinder my walk with Christ. You follow me? Yeah. I'm, putting, I'm putting too much on my plate because I don't want to say no. I'm not, I'm not using wisdom. Huh? Y'all with me? I'm, 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 I'm not allowing my yay to be yay and my nay to be nay and anything else other than that cometh of evil. You follow me? I'm allowing myself not to walk in truth. Conditions and situations. I'm, I'm hanging on to stuff. That, that, that upper side, uh, the first verse, is a weight. It's burdensome. It's plaguing me. It's hindering my walk. It's hindering my growth. Y'all with me? Now notice this verse then. Notice. 
He said, that, that because of that verse, my son, despise not the, uh, verse 12 and 5, my son, despise not thou the chastening of the Lord, nor faint when thou art rebuked of him. Now, if these burdens and, and conditions are going on in your life, the Lord is going to chasten you. That word chasten literally means he's going to instruct. Huh? He's going to visit you and talk to you about that situation, about those things that are burdens, about those things that are problems, because he's in it for you to win it. Huh? So, so when he does speak to you, don't think. Don't take it the wrong way. Huh? Receive it with joy. And, and, and do what he said do. Obedience is better than sacrifice. Walk in truth. Walk in truth. Walk in truth. What's the truth of the matter? God didn't call me to that. God didn't put that burden on me. Huh? Huh? Uh, 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 uh. These relationships that I'm trying to hold on to, huh? God hasn't ordained it. Huh? It's, it's bringing me down. Huh? It's not, it's not elevating my walk with Christ. Huh? Huh? The, uh, me not being able to say no. Huh? Especially to strangers I don't know. I'm worried about their feelings. Huh? That ain't God. Huh? That's the enemy trying to hold you back. Go ahead. I was just thinking, Jesus wasn't hurt, worried about hurting Peter's feelings when he told Peter, get me behind me. Get behind me, Satan. He's walking the truth. That, if I said that to almost anybody, I'd be concerned I hurt their feelings, I think. But right. Jesus... Well, well blah, 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 I, I'm not talking about going around being... Uh, uh, I can't say rude no, or anything like that, but but I'm talking about being free, yeah. walking in truth. Right, exactly. Amen. If if you know that that what you're asking me to do is going to hinder my walk with Christ, no, I'm not doing it. Amen. You can get blue in the face. You can tell me off. Huh? I'm I'm holding my ground. And you know this, I'm gonna say this. Uh, when you use, when people are used to you saying yes, and you say no, they gonna wanna strangle you. Uh, tell you all. Uh, then they're gonna bring up like the devil. You used to do it, you think you're too good now? Uh, uh, they're gonna they gonna talk about you like that. Uh, but so what? Am I right? So what? Y'all with me? Uh, walk in truth. My sister? Yeah, absolutely. Now notice this. He says, My son, despise not the chastening of the Lord. Now, don't get sweated out because the Lord is correcting you. He's straightening you out. Don't become offended at him. Amen? Now, the Lord may speak to you in a dream. He may speak to you in an a, by an angel. He may speak to you by a prophet. He may speak to you by your pastor. Huh? He may speak to you by a stranger. Huh? He may speak to you by a fellow member. Huh? He may even use a sinner to speak to you. Huh? You follow me? He used a dumb ass, didn't he? <laughs> Barack. Amen? Hallelujah. So he'll use anything that he wants to correct us, to straighten us out. Now, some people can't receive instruction. Those are immature people. Amen? You know you're immature in that area when you can't do what's right when you pout, you sad, you mad, you offended. You follow me? 
That's an issue. That's a problem. Am I right? Now, what are you supposed to do when you sad, mad, and offended? What, I'm, I'm literally asking that question. What are you supposed to do? Because we all, we're human. There's some, there's some buttons that, 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 you know, I don't really want to push. I know there's some buttons you don't really want to push. Life happens. So what are you supposed to do? My sister? Be angry and sin not. <laughs> all right. Say be angry, sin not. And then the Bible tells you, get rid of anger. Uh, uh, concerning that situation. Amen. Repent when needed. Repent. Oh, God. Repent. You never can repent too much. No. Nope. Talk to yourself. You know when you when you when you getting hot up in the collar and you know your behavior ain't right. Huh? Repent. Amen. Am I right? Amen. Turn. Listen, Lord, help me. Huh? Lord, help me. Lord, I got I, I, I see in me. Oh, wretched man that I am. <laughs> huh? Hallelujah. Y'all with me? Thank you. But now the worst thing you can do is back up on God. Huh? We're talking about truth. Don't back up on God. Because that's your help. That's where your deliverance is coming from. Huh? Don't back up on the saints. Huh? Y'all with me? Yeah. Oh, you mean you'll be offended by them? Or is that what you're saying? Well, what I'm saying is, don't avoid it. Oh, okay. Yeah. Don't, don't, don't avoid God. Okay. Sometimes we get don't offended at God. Us. Don't forsake the fellowship. Right. But sometimes we get offended at God and we stop praying. <laughs> Who's that hurting? <laughs> we, 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 stop, we stop our church attendance because we mad. Who's that hurting? Huh? Huh? I stop reading. I stop, I stop trying to do the things of, of God. Me, myself, and I. Right. We do that, you know. Huh? Because I'm mad. Because God corrected me. For my good. Amen. Truth. We got to walk in truth. God, God will never hurt us. God is for us. God is our helper. <laughs> Am I right? Amen. Hallelujah. This is a good Bible study. Thank you. Walk in truth. You know, he's been pressing that on me for the last three weeks. Walk in truth. I see why. Walk in truth. Don't, don't, don't allow yourself to be deceived. Me saying it's right ain't right. Huh? Me denying my feelings. Huh? If I if you allow me to say it that way. Me denying. Uh, the way the the way I the way things are offending me, and when I say that, I mean uh, dealing with people, dealing with situations, realizing that this burden ain't coming from God is something that I'm not standing up uh, 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 for or against. Huh? Who 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 am I gonna blame? And God is telling me, let it go. See, that's the thing. God chastens us. He instructs us. Yeah. I hope y'all are understanding what I'm saying. That in this life, God, God, God through his Holy Spirit leads and guides us. Right? Mm -hmm. so, so if the Holy Ghost is trying to lead and guide me one way, but because of my feelings... Uh, and, 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 and I'm saying I got it uh, and, and it's becoming burdensome it's becoming a, a plague to me it's hindering my walk Who, whose problem is that? who's the cause? Uh, yeah. so the solution he said lay it aside he said this Jesus put it this way. 
my God, my God. He said, if your right hand offend thee, do what? He said, if your eye offend you, do what? <laughs> huh? Huh? Don't try to carry offenses. You're not that strong. Feel allow me to say it that way. You're strong <laughs> in the Lord. <laughs> huh? But he said, cast all your burdens upon what? Him. Carry his burden. Cast your burden on him. We teach it tonight. My sister. You just said it. Paul, when he quoted that scripture, he was talking about the, the wife and the husband. The woman was asking too many questions in the church setting. And so Paul said, uh, uh, you know, let her ask those questions at home, you know, uh, to her husband, you know, and don't stop trying to disrupt the church. You know, he wasn't talking about preaching. Because he said, he said, your sons and your daughters are going to prophesy. <laughs> and you've got, you've got examples of women preachers in the Bible. So, yeah, so the, that, that kind of stuff, you know, know the truth. Walk in your truth. in your way. Things that you are trying to carry that he hasn't ordained for you to carry. Am I right? Now, notice this. Verse 6. For whom the Lord loveth, he what? Now, he's doing it because he loves you. For no other reason than his love for you. His love for me. Alright? So I need to receive what he's saying. Am I right? You need to receive 
the correction and the instruction of the Lord. Walk in truth. Am I right? Now notice this. <coughs> For whom the Lord loveth, he chasteneth. And that word chasteneth means literally to train up, to discipline, to instruct, to teach. That word chasteneth means to uh, 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 train up, to discipline to instruct, to teach. We've got to allow the Lord to discipline us, instruct us, to teach us. Am I right? When do you ever graduate from his instruction? Never. His teaching? Never. Never. Amen? Hallelujah. Oh, and he does it purely out of love. Am I right? The Lord has an investment in you. <laughs> now, don't you correct your children because you love them? Instruct them because you love them? Chasten them because you love them? Amen? And you know, there's a word in here that, that we miss when we read this verse. Scourge. Huh? Scourge. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> We missed that word. What does that word mean, scourge? Scourge. It means to whip. <laughs> That's what it says. For whom? If you do a chastening, no, verse 6. For whom the Lord loveth, he chasteneth, and scourges every son he received it. That word scourge means to whip. And I'm like, in, I'm in my mind when I, when I, when I, when I, when he showed me that word, say, y'all miss this word all the time. <laughs> I said, Lord, when have you ever whipped somebody? You know, I'm trying, I'm wrecking my brain. And the only, only one time I came up with, when the Lord whipped them folk when they made the, uh, the temple, a den of thieves, put them cords together, huh? And went in there and whipped them. I think we all know when we deserve a weapon. Absolutely. Sister Jack. Yes. Now that's what he's talking about. That's what he's talking about. Thank you, Sister Jack. That's what he's talking about. Amen. It don't feel good at all. He said, she said, you may be you can be spiritually whipped. Huh? He'll get you. Yeah. Huh? Oh my God. Oh my God. Come on in. Right. Sound like you've been there. <laughs> We've been there. I've been there. That's it. That's he got about Sunday motion. Surrender. And then when you surrender, that's when the courage starts. Yeah. You know? But uh, God knows when you, you can't fool him. You can say you got the victory, you've done this. But God knows. He knows. And that test is going to continue. Yeah. Until you totally surrender to his will. Yeah. So when God whoops us, like Sister Jackie said, it's a test. Yeah. It's a severe test. Yeah. You know, it's Get. not something you just jump in and out of. Yeah. And it can last a while. A while. Until you get the lesson. Once you get the lesson, once you get obey God, once you surrender, it's over just like that. I'm loving it. Hold on, bro, bro. I gotta hit this because she hit the point. Huh? And 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 the reason why we get whipped spiritually is to help us to remember, don't do it again. Huh? He said. He told Lot's wife, don't look back. Huh? Jesus said, remember Lot. Huh? <laughs> yes. huh? Remember. 
It didn't feel good. I knew when I was growing up, I ain't get too many because I ain't like them. Huh? I maybe needed them, but I ain't like them. I remember. Go ahead. I, this is an illustration. I, I remember in high school, we had a coach that was better than most coaches around. This guy understood each one of us players to a point where he knew how to discipline each guy. And that's God the Father. He knows us, each one of us, so well. And he knows how to discipline us. He knows what we need at any given time to, to get us to be that much better. And, and he, he know that coach knew exactly what triggered me. Absolutely. Some parents got children who didn't just look at it. The children fall out, <laughs> get straightened up. Uh, some you talk to, they get all disappointed, you know, and get straightened out. Some you got actually scourged. <laughs> Spare the rod, uh, the job. Different, different, different. Am I right? Notice this. He says, for whom the Lord loveth, he chased it and scourged it. <laughs> and I like the way, since Jackie hit it, spiritual whippings. Amen? Hallelujah. Every son whom he received. So that should make you feel good if you're going through a spiritual whipping because he received you. <laughs> Uh, just straighten it out. That's all. Like Brother Bob said, repent. Yeah. Yeah. Go ahead. Yeah, absolutely. You can feel it. Absolutely. Yeah. Something going on. Under the New Covenant, under the New Testament, it would still be rejected. Because his attitude would not Right. Uh, yeah. The reason why, because Jonah didn't have the Holy Ghost. So it's more of an inward thing than an outward thing. Right. You didn't have the Holy Ghost sir. working on the inside. Yeah. Amen. That must have been really tough for Jonah. For, for anybody who didn't have the Holy Ghost. Yes. Absolutely. But yet they did it. They did it. Uh, but now God, that's the, that's the whole thing about the beatitude and what Christ taught on the mountain. What goes on in the inside, uh, that's what matters. Your attitude determines your altitude. Paul said this in Corinthians chapter 13. If I give my body to be burned and have not charity, it profiteth me what? Nothing. 
This is good. This is good stuff. Amen. Do it with the right attitude. Amen. <laughs> Go ahead. And was it also because uh, God allowed him to do that? Was it also because he had, uh, 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 what you say, written his law? Yep. His law, uh, you know, that uh, the agreement that we have that go along with the Holy Ghost? Yes. Yes. And that's called the New Testament. The New Testament is is the new law. Yes. Yes. Absolutely. Woo! Y'all get me excited. But it doesn't mean we get to break the Ten Commandments. No, 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 no. We, we fulfill them. We we literally exceed them. Yeah. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Uh huh. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Jesus. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Killed the brother. Didn't do right. Didn't repent. All right. Let's finish up. Jesus, I got three minutes. Two minutes. Oh, I got one minute. Jesus. Oh, Lord. All right. All right. Thank you, Lord. All right. Let's, what verse are we in? Oh, man. Jesus. Let's, we'll, we'll just continue next week. Because, because we ain't finished with this. Thank you, Jesus. Because you know, only we hit that, hit, hit, hit the, hit the button. Post it. Okay. All right. We praise God. Monique was one of them.